Good morning and welcome back guys. So I thought I'd give you a bit of an update now as to where we were. I last picked up yesterday, so we're pretty much up to date. On the Takata, which is the all electric build, we've got the next ceiling panel up. So I've let this set overnight with some props in place. Got the trim in, which it's like a lock-in system. And then you knock on this piece afterwards, it's quite nice. So we can take that down this morning. I'm gonna get the last piece up here and around the max fan, and then we'll get the surround around the max fan. Oh, I might sound a bit nasally, I got a bit of man flu. Right, what else have we been doing? So I'm having a frame built around this. We've got another one of those to go this side and that all needs sort of straightening up and sanding and painting. New addition to the unit, noisy, but gee, does it make the two units warm. And then, the office. So I've had to go with dry lining, it's my first time, and it's not as easy as it looks. It was a pain in the ass, but probably lack of right tools and lack of experience for sure. But it's done, so Charles coming in this morning, she's gonna sand that, and then that's getting painted. We'll lay the floor later today, and then tomorrow is having the skirting and the internal door put on, and that's almost done. Today's job on this van, as I promised, we're getting going on the van now, so I've got to crack on, is we're going to do the bulkhead in here, which is coming just in front of the wheel arches across. But this one's having something a bit different, so I don't know if you remember, but in the middle of this bulkhead, there's going to be a toilet that slides out on like draw runners, and that's how you're going to be able to use the toilet. So we've got some heavy duty runners coming that will take the weight of a toilet and a person sitting on it. So what I'm going to do to try and scribe a piece to be perfectly this side and this side because we've got some pretty funky profiles here. So we're going to do two templates first. So I'm going to do a template for that side, template for this side, and then we'll use that to create the bulkhead. Okay, so I've just done my template, which is this board. So I've cut it to a meter high because that's the height of the bulkhead. And I've got this one is for the one side and this one's for the other. So what I can do now is get a furniture board out. We can mark those then on the two ends. But what I need to do first is get a couple of width points to make sure that I position the templates properly. So I'm gonna measure from this section to this section and we'll just do another double check and measure from the meter high point across just to make sure we've got them not only at the right sort of width but they've also got to be at the right square. Now you might have also noticed a minute ago we got another van here. That's our next van for after this one. So Charles gonna be stripping that one out sound deadening it, insulating it. I'll nip over and first fix the wiring and ply line it and then she'll do the carpeting and this needed. And obviously we've got a couple of windows. But she's at the moment not too happy. So she's currently sanding all that dry lining I've done. But when you're sanding something like that, you get a lot of dust. So I've told her, you've got to wear a face mask and she's not too happy about it. Check this out. You right, babe? What's up? <laughs> I'm getting shocks off the equipment. You can't be getting shocks off 18 volt tools. Well, why does it hurt then? It's just, it's called vibrations, darling. I'm on one arm up here, another arm over there, and I can't reach. I'm scared to stand on that because I'm going to fall off. But come and feel how smooth it is. Yeah. The other thing is, like in these corners, where you look. Yeah, you'll have to do them by hand. I'll get you a block and some sandpaper, and we'll just have to corner those in. I ain't getting this room finished today, though, am I? Yeah, you will. You'd be surprised. I reckon about a good hour, hour and a half of sanding in here, this room will be ready. But Probably. see where it looks like that, and when it's sanded, it looks like that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the sanding part is okay. It's just carrying. You've got the Hoover in one hand. Try and maybe I put. I can't breathe. Yeah, well, maybe try and put the hoover on the trestle and do all the lower half first. So you're just using your one hand. I was doing that. And then, yeah, it's not all I can do. I, I need to get an extractor with a longer hose. Yeah, because when I get on to do the ceiling after, I'm yeah. going to struggle with that, isn't I? Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm going to have to stand on the trestle, one hand on the hoover and one hand on the sander, and on my mat, my Darth Vader mask. It's not happening. Yeah, it's sure, so happy. But, like I said, I've just come in here now, and I can already see the dust. It's such a fine dust in it, it gets everywhere. Right, that is those two 
template put onto the board and that's been cut in here and here now this is the total height because there's a kitchen area here and a larder here so we're going to do a cut out here like a dip which is 100 mil down but i'm also going to have a cut out here for that slide in toilet i'm going to leave that a second because i remembered i've still got a ceiling panel to do so this one bonded nicely last night that's lovely so we're just on the bench cutting this one we got a couple of funky scribes to do around this section and then this side is completely different again but bearing in mind i've still got the solway b pillar top trim to put on there and then we've got a cutout as well for the max fan i've made a start on it i've scribed the one side and the other corner and i've just marked this out so i'm just going to go double check my measurements for this and then we can cut this out and these you just glue then straight to the ceiling as you've seen on the previous panel and i'll just put some props up to hold that in place and charla's just finished sanding all this room how did it go love <laughs> honestly it's not something i ever want to repeat again you didn't enjoy that no, no. <laughs> particularly the ceiling where i felt like my shoulders just couldn't, I couldn't, I think it was because of the angle, I was like, and you're, it up. yeah, you're pushing it up, but yeah. it's all done. She's got her paint pot out. I got a story about that paint pot, right? Because Stu always says I'm a rubbish painter, but this time I'm gonna prove him wrong because I've got a professional kit. She has got, she's gone and bought a Harris Trade big box set with, yeah, everything you could possibly yeah. need in it. Yeah, look at this. Get in. It's an extension pole. Yeah, but I've seen on TikTok the way they paint on that, so I'm going to try that in a bit. <laughs> You're not right. <laughs> well, at least she's out of my way in there. I'll let her crack on. Right, that's the panel cut. Now time to see if it fits. I've taken quite a few measurements, so I'm fairly confident. So I'll set you down and we'll have a look at it. Okay, that's not too bad actually. So we got that up nice against the knock-on edge and trim. That comes up around, up there, and then again this side comes down and around. Not bad. So the other thing, I'm, you get this problem in every van, and it's always this dreaded 45 up on the roof that goes all the way along. So I'm thinking I'm going to do some sort of battens in between all these cross members and try and clad it either in the plastic or it'll probably be the ceiling stuff i got more of this and i'll be able to get nicer strips on it that's good that's absolutely fine so we'll get him back down take him over to the bench get loads of adhesive on the back of that and then we'll prop it up and get some spreaders on there and i can just leave that for the rest of the day till that goes off and then when that's done we'll come back to this board but i said i need to speak to the customer see if we're going to do this cut out i've got the toilet here so i can get the measurements for that i've also got the fridge because the fridge is going in like a kind of like a larder unit which is going right here and we're going to try and get the fridge up as high as we can with a shelf on top and it sort of kicks in then and there'll be a tambour door on it and inside that little cupboard then there'll be a socket which is what that's for and you can put a kettle and toaster stowed away in there which will be quite nice but we're getting there we are having outro flooring done in the front and then we're going to do kitchen cabinets but here and then he's having a bench seat coming this way. He's got a 560 battery going in, which is massive. He's also got the Renogy 3000 watt inverter charger, and that's also pretty big. So I'm not 100% sure all that is actually gonna fit under the bench. So he's having it quite deep. It's gonna be about 600 deep. So there's plenty of space in there, but they're two really big items that have got to go in there along with the electric board you know you've got the dc to dc and mppt and all the other bits that have got to go in as well so what i might do is well we'll see what space we got but i've got a funny feeling the battery might have to go somewhere else and i'm definitely not going to be getting the diesel eater in that bench seat either so i'm gonna to have to have a think about where that's gonna go 
<laughs> All I can say is good luck to anybody who might want to take this down in the future. There's no mechanical fixings on this, they are just stuck to the ply. Which makes me a bit nervous because obviously they're upside down, you've got bumps and that. And I know I'm going to have wall cabinets, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I did the same with the first two that I've put on and they're absolutely solid. i got no air pockets, there's no bouncing. So it's done the job. So I've used an adhesive silicon, what was it, OB1. And once this is on and in place, I just roll over it then with a roller just to make sure all this silicon's all spread out. I just got as much contact with the ply up top as possible. So I'm gonna get that in, get that propped, and then we'll move on. And that's the panel in with spreaders. Couldn't record it, I actually needed Charles' help as well. Is because you've got the silicon on the back of this, you don't want it like accidentally touching anything and getting silicon everywhere. So that's in, I fired in a couple of little pins just where the track is and then the cover will cover those at all. Just get a couple in there just to hold it nice. And what I'm gonna do now as well, while the silicon's still wet, is put the Max Fan Surround on, like I did on the rear. A, because it's another job finished, but B, that will actually then help hold that panel up in place as well. So there'll be plenty of support on this. Now I know the bulkhead fits. I've just done the top trim on it. So you can see, I've just done, let's have a look. So this is the driver side where the kitchen's going to be in and he wanted it straight but he also wanted the rise to be quite small. I've just done it so it's going to be about 100mm above the kitchen worktop just to give some protection to the bed. And now what I've got to do, so the toilet is actually going in the centre of this and it's coming on a slide out. So this is our next job. So he's bought a cassette toilet. It's one of the ones which has got to be plumbed and have an electric supply for the pump, which is this toilet here. We're going to build a box for it that's going on. I've bought these heavy duty runners. Now these can take 220 kilograms. That's a lot of weight, you know, nearly quarter of a ton. I'm gonna do the base out of 18 mil ply because it's the strongest one we've got. So I'm gonna cut out the base and then so we're gonna make a box, do some runners, but we're also then gonna have to do another case sort of in the garage so that the runners can be secured and then that box can be attached to it and slide in and out. This is today's job. Get my head around it, get it designed, get it built, get it tested and that all being well, I can then cut the hole out of the front of the bulkhead and then I can do the door for that and fingers crossed, that's my plan and it works. But we can play around with it until it does anyway. This is this morning's job. It is minus four out here today so it's absolutely freezing in here today. I've got the little diesel eater down there running. Um, oh, I'll show you the office as well. That got finished off yesterday. Some of you might have seen Martin before on my pre on our other channel. He's worked with me for years. So he's come in yesterday. He's done a window beer for us. And then in beer, we have some trim and a door. I laid the floor, not last night, the night before. So he's done the skirting, architrave the inside of this window and the door and Charles has painted all the walls and again I've chucked the heater on. Because it is blooming cold out there, minus four, like the temperatures just change so quickly from it being quite mild because I think November and October were quite mild and obviously yeah, it's come and hit us all isn't it in one go so it's bloody freezing so I did have that one just running but it's too noisy when I'm using the camera so as soon as I come off this that thing's going back on I find if I use that that heats the place up pretty quick and then I keep the little one on because it a, uses less fuel but it does help maintain it it doesn't get so cold then but you've got to kind of get it warm before I can turn it off. Right, we're making some progress. So I took the toilet out and that was actually damaged on the front. So we got to get a replacement for that. But it's a good job it was here because I needed the measurements anyway to be able to build this. So let's have a look what I've done so far. Okay, so this is the box and the toilet's going to sit inside here. That's the back end. And then what I've done is I've got these heavy duty runners here and here with the joint on the 18 mil because right all the weight is bearing on the sides and the base so i've used an 18 mil ply for that with these i've glued 
biscuit jointed and screwed it and then the runners have been attached to both the 4x2 and the box frame with some rather long thick screws and I put loads in. Now when this is used, it's in the garage right now, the bulkhead's here and that will just slide out. Now as you can imagine it's like a lever isn't it, so the majority of the weight lifting up is going to be on the rear so i think i'll do some sort of cross brace get it down i might even try and actually bolt that through the floor and get a spread of plate underneath just to completely solidify that but what i need to do a minute is test it all so i need to figure a way out of keeping that back down pull that out and i'm gonna stand on the end of it right time to test this and this is in real time so we'll learn together I've grabbed one of the neighbours, he's going to jump on the back up and keep you weighted down. You good? Yeah. Come on. Hey! Yeah, that's going to be fine. That was me right on the end as well. Right, happy with that. I was stood right on the end, which you wouldn't do. You're going to be sitting on the toilet. And that was solid, so perfect. I wasn't sure that was gonna work or not, but no creaks in the wood, so I know that's gonna be good. I think the main thing here now is making sure the back edge of these four by twos are down and down strong. As long as they that's taken care of, bang in. I brought the bulkhead back in and just positioned it roughly. It's not been squared off, but that's not too important a second and what I've done is positioned the toilet where I believe it's gonna go and what I've done that piece there is the exact depth and height of the fridge we're using which is going in a larder and we're raising it so it's gonna be sort of up about here so you can see where I've marked a line down there like again just very rough but that comes to 550 so that's where the front of the fridge is going to be at, at the at the most and then this side we're going to do a bit shorter we're going to do either 450 or 500 this side i'm hoping to do 500 because that does still give us over 800 mil gap in the middle which is plenty and then i've got my center of the two is here so what i can do now is get the total height of this to here and add a couple of mil for clearance get the width of this and i got to make sure i include the runner that's attached to this part that will move with it and come out and that will give us the measurement then for the hatch opening that i can cut out which is our next job so i want to cut that out bring it in square it off fit the bulkhead test that piece i'm not going to fit this piece just yet because i've still got now a toilet we got to wait to be delivered so it's saturday today and the customer actually arranged for that to come here so he's gonna speak to the supply and get a replacement now that's got a water supply and an electrical supply what I've got is like a coiled cable that will allow it to be sort of extended and then for the water supply we're gonna use a flexi hose but it's gonna have to be massively oversized because it's gonna be moving about I've calculated about 600 mil so I'm gonna do some sort of tunnel system that that hose will stay in and I need it to be particularly long because we don't want no kinks we need bends to be long and said so we don't want any risk of kinking on it that'll be fun I was hoping to sort of crack on with that today but with the toilet being faulty I'll have to settle with my win on the draw part of it working but if I can get this bulkhead in now then that means we can build the kitchen section here do the bench here and then I can tackle all that cabling. I gotta clear this table, get the bulkhead out on you, and let's get this door cut out. And hopefully, if I can cut it out nice, I'm hoping to be able to actually reuse that section to be the door for the front of the toilet because the grains are all gonna follow. And then I'm gonna edge the two sides of the cutout. And what I'm thinking of doing then is horizontally across the middle of that door is to kind of do it like a bit of a bifold. Okay, so the cutout I need to do is 600 high by 494 wide. Right, let's do this.
Right, that's the door cut out, so all I need to do now is just clean the two corners on both the opening and the door. That's just where you've got the difference of thickness of blade between the jigsaw and the uh, plunge saw. So we just give them a light sanding to flatten both of those. And we can fit this bulkhead. 